Hey mama, are you a multi-passionate mom who is juggling all the things, nursing a baby, battling laundry, trying to keep it together and keep a spicy marriage, and feeling like you're filling all of it? What's up? I'm Ashley Carroll. I'm here to hold your hand through this process because I believe when you're ready to take control of your life, beat the limiting excuses, step into your own power, you can not only survive, but you can thrive. But you're going to have to show up for yourself. It's time for me to tough love your way through prioritization, taking self-care seriously, getting rid of excuses, reconnecting with your family, kids, and spouse, and quite honestly, learning to love the chaos because the glory is in the journey. It's in the mess. In this podcast, you will find balance for busy mamas, navigating mom guilt, time management strategies, and everything in between with no fluff and lots of fun. Let's go. Hey friend, what's up? We are starting the first day of our Unstuck series. So get ready to get unstuck, to get tough loved, and to get some good juicy information so you can start making huge impactful changes in your life. Let's go. So grateful that you're listening to this podcast when you could be listening to a bajillion other things. You're doing a million other things in the world. Hopefully you're multitasking because your mom's got to get stuff done, right? Like I know how it is. So today we are talking about getting unstuck. We're starting with letting go of old habits, old ways of thinking, and old people. Those toxic people, they got to go. Here's the deal. I don't believe that I am like some insanely intuitive or like just know-it-all person that I feel like I've achieved this level or this, um, you know, I don't know, kind of way of thinking that I have it all together. I don't believe that at all. I believe it's like a continuous journey. And then I'm just sharing like breadcrumbs with you guys. Like I'm leaving breadcrumbs as I'm going and I'm like, here, if you need these, pick it up. If you don't walk right past it, like if you're like go around this one, you know, like I just want to give you guys things that you need and for you to pick up and take what you need and leave what you don't. Because I feel like it's always a continuous journey for all of us. And looking back, There are so many things that I've learned to let go of and things that I'm continuously doing every day that I'm like, oh, like I need to heal from this. I need to grow from this. And then I'm letting go and then I'm moving forward. And then like it's a constant repetitive cycle of like learning, reflecting, letting go, healing, you know, becoming more, learning to let go. Like all I got tongue tied there, but like repeat, 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 right? Your bad habits are a part of who you are but they're not your whole identity. I think I used to get so caught up in all these things that I wasn't, that I was letting it define me. It was like, I couldn't, like this, that's just who I am. Like, it was just like, period. I would say like, I'm stubborn. That's it. Like there was no like, or I'm broken. Okay. And I would just like, leave it at that. It was like, I couldn't get past those thoughts or the idea that you don't always have to be that way. Or there is that, like, that isn't you. That's just something that has affected you but that isn't who you are. We're not stuck with those forever. We're not stuck with those limiting beliefs, those thoughts. We're not stuck with these old habits that we have or the current habits that we have that we don't like, that we necessarily, you know, aren't fond of and we want to change or the ways that we're thinking. But it can control you if you let it. And it will be defeating if you let it be. Once you're confident that you've got this, you can control it and you can defeat this. It's all a mind game, y'all. But you honestly, like you can, for so long, you can um, fake it till you make it, right? But there comes a point where there's a deeper level of healing that needs to happen for it to come full circle. And it's good to fake it until you make it, but you should also be doing the underlying work because we all know when you just mask a symptom, the actual issue will always come back to bite you in the butt. So like in all things, I always talk about this constantly, holistic approach, getting to the root problem, healing that because it's going to help everything versus just masking over the top surface of things. Tony Robbins says, if you don't take the time to examine and change your habits, life just starts to happen to you instead of for you. It takes work every day, constantly watering this new lifestyle that we want to achieve and letting the old go away. Like we're letting it fade away. We are focusing on the new. We are watering and really being intentional about these changes that we want to happen. Okay, so 
we've talked about <laughs> this thought, like mentally getting behind, letting go of the old, moving past things and moving forward, right? We want to make changes, but how do we do this, right? Okay, so how do we do this, right? We've thought about this. We're behind the fact that, yes, I need to change. I want this new year to be a new me or the ver- same me, new version, right? Like we want to move forward. We want to quit the old habits. We want to stop the limiting beliefs. We want to let go of toxic people. So here's a few things that you need to ask yourself as you examine your life currently how it is and what you need to do to make the changes to get to where you want to go. If you have a piece of paper, that would be super helpful to write these down or go back and listen to it and write them down when you have a chance. Okay, so your first question is, why do you feel stuck? Write it down. Write about it. There should be random things popping up in your head. It doesn't have to make sense. It can be like a brainstorm. Don't overthink it. Just write, like, why do you feel stuck? It's okay to be brutally honest and say that motherhood is one of them or that you have kids and you're strapped in by nap times. Those used to be the worst. (laughs) I would have... One kiddo doing two naps, another kiddo doing one nap. And so for like a big chunk of the day, somebody was taking a nap, but never the same kids at the same time. It's okay to feel stuck in that. Like, it's okay. (laughs) Write that down. Nobody's going to judge you in your own journal. It's your journal. It's your piece of paper. You don't have to show anybody if you don't want to. The only person that's eyes are going to see this is yours. And you should not be judging yourself for this. I'm giving you permission because I know some of you are going to write that down and then you're going to feel guilty about it. It's okay to feel that guilt, feel it, and then move on. Okay, so why do you need to move forward? Like, why are you feeling like you want to get unstuck? Okay, and then brainstorm those out. Then your next question is, what will happen if I let go of my insecurities? Just imagine for a moment that you have zero insecurities. You feel confident. You feel like you're sexy in your body. You feel like you're strong. You're empowered. You're, um, you know, this, that, and the other. Whatever you feel insecure about, your legs look banging. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Journal it out and think about and bring and like really, you know, imagine yourself in this body, in this life, completely secure in yourself. What does that look like? Okay, then after you're done doing that, I want you to write down why or no I want you to write down how you cope with those insecurities so if you feel unpretty in a room full of women do you tend to hide do you tend to not talk as much do you tend to worry about your spouse's attraction to other women instead of you like be honest you guys like break these we have to break these walls down we have to get down to the like root cause and really break through otherwise there's always going to be some sort of barrier there for you and you won't fully be able to embrace this new change this new life like this new sense of freedom that you really want so really ask yourself like how do I deal with this do I drink wine do I take naps do I become unmotivated do I procrastinate do I you know whatever it is do I pick fights with my husband do I you know think about it. Honestly, there's, it makes no sense sometimes the things that we do and that's okay. (laughs) Write it down, become aware of it. It's fine. Okay. And then I want you to say, I want you to ask yourself after you've written all those things down, like how do you cope with your insecurities? What do you need to change? And then go like sometimes if you want to, you know, if you say like, I am constantly questioning my attractiveness to my spouse. Well, what do you need to change? You need to change the way you feel about yourself, right? Like how attractive you feel. And then you won't be questioning if your spouse is attracted to you. And then you say, how do I change that? Maybe it's I get up 15 minutes earlier before the kids so I can put on makeup. I can actually get dressed and I can feel good, right? Like, or maybe it's I go for a run. I go for a walk every day. You guys, there is power in exercise, whether it's you know, a little or a lot, there is power in moving our bodies and we feel so good. So if this is something you struggle with, go all in, like make one change. Don't. And you know what? There's going to be some of us who just go balls to the wall because we're ready. We've been stuck for a long time. We're ready. This is not enough. We are so ready. We're all in. We're dedicated. We are um, investing in this moment and this opportunity to make these changes to become unstuck and so you're going to go all in and you're going to give it your all and then it's become a habit and then you're never going to look back and it's going to be amazing. There's going to be another group of us that we just have to focus on one thing at a time. 
So as we're going through these questions, you need to look and prioritize like what are the things that I want to change first and then pick one way you're going to change it. So like maybe it's not doing working out and then getting dressed and then doing yada, yada, yada. Maybe it's just you're going to focus for a month on just getting dressed every day. And that's cool. I want to give you the freedom because I want you to set yourself up for success because if you do something that is right for somebody else but wrong for you, these habits won't last. They won't become habits at all because you won't be able to maintain this schedule or this ability to keep going because it's not you. So do what's best for you. Focus on one thing at a time. Or if you're like really motivated and feeling really good and really wanting to get unstuck and this is your personality that you can just take it all and just like do a 360 and just cold turkey it and go balls to the wall, then do that. Okay, your next question is, what will happen if I let those toxic people go? Y'all, we are like the five people we spend the most time with. And that doesn't mean that they have to be extremely toxic. Like I'm not talking honey boo boo. I mean, maybe you do have those people in your life, but it could be people that you're constantly comparing yourself to, that you love, that you that are great, kind people, but you're constantly comparing yourself to them. Right now, they need to go in your toxic category because it's making you have negative and toxic thoughts and habits. So imagine your life and brainstorm and just jot down whatever comes to your mind of what would it look like if you were to let those toxic people go? Like, what would it look like if you stopped looking at her account all day, every day? What would it look like if you didn't compare yourself to that person every holiday? Like, what would it look like? So just brainstorm and think these out. Think about these people. Who comes to mind? How can you lessen your time and interaction with them without causing drama? We can have toxic people or people that we, you know, cause us to do things that aren't necessarily good for us, like maybe drinking too much or thinking negative thoughts about ourselves, comparing ourselves. And sometimes these are good people. Like they don't mean to do that. They don't. It's just something that we do. I don't know, you know, just because we're human. And so we don't need to cut off ties with them completely because we love them. They're our dear friends. They're our family members. But we do need to ha- intentionally spend less time with them. And so I think planning less play dates with them, planning less hangouts with them, planning less girls nights out with them, like finding a new group or, you know, and just making a slow transition away from spending your time with that person or those people. And honestly, there are people that may come to mind that you completely need to cut off and it's going to hurt and it's going to be painful and it probably will cause drama. But you have to ask yourself, you have, I mean, you really have to dig deep and say like, what is the worst thing that could happen? And what's the worst thing that could happen if I don't? Like if these people are abusive, if they are really, really extremely, I mean, like genuinely toxic to you, like toxic, ugly people, then, and you need to cut them out then like I feel like your pros and cons of not cutting these people out are worse than the drama that you will initially have to deal with. Like the the outcome, if you continue to live this lifestyle and let them impact your life is more dangerous than dealing with a little drama on the front hand. So you just kind of have to ask yourself that. Okay, and then the last few questions I want you to ask yourself and write down is why do I feel like my marriage is stuck? What does that mean to you when I say that? Like that your marriage is stuck. Why do you feel like, or why do I feel like my marriage is stuck? What comes to mind? What do you think about not enough date nights, not enough intimacy, not enough connection, not enough like what, like what does that look like to you? I can't tell you, I'm not you. So everybody has their own definition of feeling stuck and their own feelings of feeling stuck and what that looks like. So you just need to brainstorm, jot those down. Again, nobody's gonna judge you. The worst thing that could happen is that you aren't honest with yourself. You aren't honest with this exercise and you don't write down the things that are really going on in your heart. And then you're not able to make those changes for fear of what, like nobody, nobody's going to see them, right? Like it's fear, it's your own self-sabotage, your own negative thoughts that are trying, and, and honestly, the enemy, right? He's trying to keep you where you are because he doesn't want you to thrive. He doesn't want your marriage to succeed. He doesn't want your kids to impact and change the world. So he's going to hold you hostage. And if we limit ourselves, like we're, we're constantly like, oh my gosh, how dare I write this down when nobody's even going to see it. You're only trapping yourself. You're only um, preventing yourself from this growth and this change and this freedom that you really want for yourself. 
So again, I want to give you permission to go just like all in, be honest and truthful with this exercise and write down what's really on your heart, what really comes to mind when you ask yourselves these questions. Okay, then after you write down why you feel like your marriage is stuck, what's one way you can start making changes to one of those feelings or one of those things that you've now pinpointed out or that you've become aware of that is making you feel stuck? Okay, so do you see the pattern here? We're like pinpointing the habit, the limiting belief, the negative thought, the negative um, circumstance or an area of our life that we want to change. And we ask ourselves, what would it look like if that was no longer there? And we want to do that because we want to see, we want to prepare our brain for the reasons why. Like if we don't have a motivation, if we're not sure about why or what it is that we're working towards and why we want to get there or what it's like, like an end goal or end visualization of what we want things to look like, right? Or how, how great it'll be, then our mind is going to be like, meh, or we're not going to prioritize it, right? It's not as easy to do that if we don't understand and fully grasp and, um, mentally picture and know what it is we're trying to reach or achieve or what kind of life we want to have. And so we're, you can do that with anything and you can add in more questions for yourself as you're writing these down. So then you would ask yourself, what would it look like if you let that go, whatever it is? And then what do you need to do to change that thing to make it happen? And then what's one thing you want to change? Or you can write down a bunch of things you want to change, but then you just need to focus on changing one of those things at a time. Okay, so let's talk about a different aspect of this and how it affects our relationship with our spouses is that I know a lot of these things that are going to come up or maybe just a few or maybe only one will involve your husband or your spouse's involvement, right? And the deal is, is that we can't control other people. We can only control us, how we respond to things, how we show up, how we... um, interact like we can't control anything else so we need to just focus on us for right now and not worry about what our spouse is doing what he's not doing how he's showing up what he's struggling with we need to focus on us our growth and how we're showing up in our marriage how we're showing up in our uh, with our kids how we're interacting and engaging with our children we need to worry about us first and then if he wants to get involved or if he feels that that urge and that like push to change things too, great. Let him do his work on his, but we need to focus on us. We don't need to worry about him because if you are making the changes necessary for your marriage, if you are showing up 100%, then I guarantee you he's going to start to show up meet, to meet you. And if he doesn't, maybe not right away, but almost always, They start to sense that there's a change coming and they want to do better. They want to show up just like you are. It makes them want to grow more or they want to grow with you because they see the positive changes in you and they want that. And sometimes it never happens, honestly. And sometimes you need to get a third party involved to say, hey, like, what's what's the deal? Why don't like how come I'm showing up to this 110 percent and or even if I'm at 30 percent today, I'm doing 100 percent of that 30 percent. But you can't even give me. 20% of that 30% that you're showing up to our marriage every day. You need a third party to get involved. But nine times out of 10, people rise up to the occasion when they see that you're growing and they want that and they see that you're thriving and they want that. And if it doesn't happen, that's something that we need to worry about at a later time. Right now, we need to focus on you getting you unstuck, right? Because at the end of the day, we can only control how we show up in our lives, how we respond, how we interact And sister, it's okay for you to focus on yourself for once, okay? So if you needed to hear that, there you go. Let's focus on you. Let's get you unstuck. Let's break through those limiting beliefs, those old habits, which speaking of limiting beliefs real quick, if you want to pinpoint those out and say, what will happen if I let go of telling myself I'm not good enough? Or what would happen if I let go of saying that I'm ugly? Or what would happen if I let go of telling myself that I'm you know too much for somebody and then you can ask yourself what's one way or how can I change that thought about myself maybe it's simply just telling yourself that you're beautiful instead of telling yourself that you're ugly so maybe that and then you say well how do I do that what's one action that I can do to start believing that I'm actually beautiful maybe you write down a post-it note so you see it every morning on your mirror and it says I'm beautiful y'all 
Do not be ashamed of putting sticky notes all over your house. They're putting things up that will help you remember who the heck you are because it's important. Y'all, it is okay to show up for yourself however you need to show up for yourself. And if your kids see and they're like, Mom, what's that? You need to tell yourself you're beautiful? Be like, yeah, I do because I forget sometimes. You're preaching to your daughter right there. You're preaching to your kids. You're preaching to your son to remember to tell his wife that she's beautiful all the time because she may forget, right? It's way worse to let our fears control us than to start being unafraid and make the changes that need to happen so we can fully live, fully living out and embracing the person that God has created us to be, the people that we want to be, the life that we want to live. Y'all, the only thing that can happen if you let your fears control this situation and you don't do uh, what you need to do because you're conscious constantly worried about what other people will think of you is that you stay still you stay stuck for the rest of your life y'all I don't know about you but that is more scary than somebody that I don't know making fun of me because of some post-it notes or because of you know me showing up a little bit more wearing lipstick all of a sudden out of nowhere like their judgment is like a fraction of my concern compared to my concern for what happens if I don't take the necessary steps to improve my life or to keep moving forward or to have, you know, this, that, the other. So what are you going to do today to let go of that fear and truly step into and live this life that you were called to live and that you're able to live and experience? Y'all, we only get this one opportunity. We only get this one chance. There is no do-overs. So right now we're 30 what? We're 30-something years in. We're 40-something years in. Do you want to spend the next 50 years doing the same dang thing, feeling the same way, feeling stuck, feeling trapped, feeling limited, feeling... Um, constantly beat down by your thoughts. That would be a nightmare, y'all. Is your marriage going to survive that kind of brutality? That suffocation when you're, you're like dwindling down to the lowest of yourself that could possibly be, you know, a part of this world? No, like nothing can survive that. We can't thrive. We can't. So we have to make the necessary changes because you're worth it. Your life is worth it. It's still there. We have so much time ahead of us, y'all. We have to let go of these limiting beliefs. We have to let go of these people. We have to let go of these past experiences that told us we couldn't, told us we shouldn't, told us we are a certain way. Y'all, these things are tattooed on our skin and we can feel it. And it takes years and years of work to let go, to like remove those markings from our bodies that will will forever be marked by, right? But that doesn't mean that has to be who you are. Okay, so today I want you to go back, listen through, do those questions, brainstorm, jot down your thoughts, and let's get unstuck, y'all. Let's move forward, okay? (laughs) Hop into the Social Girls Mom community. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about why you are feeling the most stuck right now, and let's break it down. Like, if you need help thinking about things, put them in the comments, and I will, like, brainstorm with you. There is power in the village, y'all. Like sometimes we just need to put our thoughts out there to chew on it and to like see it, visualize it and have other people like kick it around with us. And then we're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then we can move forward, y'all. Okay, you have a community, use it. Love you. Have an awesome day. Don't make sure, sh- make sh- don't make sure. Do make sure to listen next week for the next episode of the Unstuck series. I'm gonna be coming at you hard again with something else. I don't know yet, but it'll be good. And you'll wanna, you don't wanna miss it. So tune in. Catch you next time.